Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. First at 4, a flood of emotions pouring through the country in the battle over abortion. It looks like we're going to finally see justice for the unborn in this country. Unprecedented leaked documents point toward a Supreme Court decision overturning Roe versus Wade. For some, it feels like betrayal. Several of these conservative justices who are in no way accountable to the American people have lied to the U.S. Senate. Tension growing over a decision that could still be months away. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, the fallout from a blockbuster report that makes it look like the United States Supreme Court is about to overturn Roe versus Wade. The website Politico published the draft opinion it says was leaked by someone inside the Supreme Court. Similar drafts often circulate before a decision is announced and they can be changed. Today, the Supreme Court has confirmed the draft is authentic and ordered an investigation. The justices, meantime, considering a challenge to a Mississippi ban on abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy. The draft, written by Justice Samuel Alito, says, quote, Roe egregiously wrong from the start. President Joe Biden. It concerns me a great deal that we're going to, after 50 years, decide a woman does not have a right to choose. But even more equally as profound is the rationale used. Right? And right. it would mean that every other decision relating to the notion of privacy is thrown into question. The president made those comments at Andrews Air Force Base. Devin Skillion is in D.C. this afternoon. We'll get to him in just a moment. But first, Kimberly Gill picks up our coverage as we start to look at the impact here in Michigan. Kim. Karen, good afternoon. We first told you about this draft opinion last night at 11. The Supreme Court's formal ruling, though, isn't expected until late June or even July. But whenever the decision comes, Michigan is going to be one of the states that will be affected immediately. That's because Michigan has what's called a trigger law. It's legislation that's been on the books for years, since 1931. And that law makes performing an abortion a felony unless it's done to save the life of the person that's pregnant. Governor Whitmer, though, has asked the Michigan Supreme Court to declare the law unconstitutional. And that action is pending. Some county prosecutors, including in Wayne, Oakland and Washtenaw counties have said they will not prosecute abortion cases and heard this from Attorney General Dana Nessel. There are just a, a, a litany of reasons why I believe that for somebody like myself who believes it's my job to protect the health, safety and well-being of the 2.2 million women of reproductive age in the state of Michigan, that I will not enforce this law because I think it will lead to further harm and further death of women in our state. And while the attorney general says she won't prosecute abortion crimes if Roe v. Wade is overturned, she also says, though, she cannot stop other county prosecutors from doing so if they choose to pursue charges. So if this draft opinion, again, if, it becomes a Supreme Court ruling. There will be many, many questions about the right to have an abortion in Michigan and certainly much more to come on this. But for now, Karen, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right. Thank you, Kim. And sure. any decision on Roe versus Wade will spark strong emotions. But the leak of this draft opinion has turned up the heat months earlier than expected. Our Devin Skillion is in Washington, D.C. to offer perspective on this moment and what happens next. Well, good afternoon from the Supreme Court, Karen. There are really two tracks of thought here that are being discussed today in the nation's capital. One, the decision itself, which would be extraordinary. The Supreme Court generally guards precedent with a great deal of reverence. This would overturn a decision that wasn't even close when it was originally announced back in 1973, a 7-2 to two decision in favor of Roe versus Wade, and that's been the law of the land for now almost 50 years. This would overturn that, of course, but the other huge break with precedent is this extraordinary leak, which just does not happen around the Supreme Court. From time to time, there have been a few leaks that have been made, including on the original uh, Roe versus Wade decision, but those were leaks that came out uh, within hours uh, of before the decision was actually announced, the final decision. This uh, would really break with tradition uh, for a decision to be leaked 
maybe two months before it was intended to be announced. And Chief Justice John Roberts is already investigating where that leak might have come from. Uh, there were perhaps somewhere between 30 to 50 people who might have had access to the writings of Judge Alito. Other court watchers have uh, noted that nobody should be rushing to judgment just yet because when justices do write these kinds of things, uh, they can be very fluid documents. They may lose support among their fellow justices. Their thinking may change. So we don't really know yet exactly whether or not this will indeed end up being the law of the land. Uh, but if it is, 26 states, we expect, would go back to outlawing abortion, and that would, at the moment, include the state of Michigan. More coming up tonight from the Supreme Court on Local 4 News at 5. Till then, from Washington, Devin Skillion, Local 4. All right, thank you, Devin, and our coverage continues at 5. We'll have former federal prosecutor and legal expert Barbara McQuaid as a guest to talk about what the Supreme Court might do next and the battles here in Michigan. And at 6, we get reaction from local right-to-life activists and Planned Parents on how they see this playing out. Our coverage continues online with updates on the impact in Michigan. And Devin Skillion writes about possible political fallout in the midterm elections. More in-depth coverage on ClickOnDetroit.com. Two Wayne County road workers are at the center of a new public corruption investigation. This morning, federal agents executed a search warrant at this home in West Bloomfield Township. 64-year-old Kevin Gunn and 54-year-old John Gibson are charged with wire fraud and money laundering. According to a federal complaint, both men used money meant for roads to buy nearly $2 million in power equipment, which included generators, lawnmowers, and chainsaws, and then were later sold. The alleged scheme happened between January of 2019 and August 2021. Both men faced up to 20 years in prison. In your first forecast, it looks like some stubborn rain showers are sticking around late into the day. Yesterday, we warned you about morning rain and it just keeps coming, Andrew. <laughs> Karen, you're exactly right. I mean, the showers keep on falling at a persistent pace here from Casco Township and Mount Clemens, farther to the north along the I-69 corridor. But you see here, it becomes a lot more scattered or a bit drier, but only for the time being. Persistent rainfall continues in these dark areas of green especially, and also these areas of yellow just north of Port Huron, also around Lakeport, and that will continue for at least the next 30 minutes or so. Temperatures are on the cool side as well. We're mostly seeing low 50s out there. You're looking live, or at least trying to, at downtown Detroit. Visibility is down to only a couple of miles, so be careful out there on wet roadways. Plus, it's tough to see. 53 degrees over at Metro Airport. Low 50s in your neighborhood as well. Anywhere from 50 degrees in Lapeer, chillier in Sandusky with 48, 53 over in Monroe. We'll continue to see these uh, showers and a few thunderstorms become more scattered with temps continuing to be in the low 50s through 11 p.m. We'll talk about late tonight, tomorrow, and your next seven days in minutes. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. It was a hard miss, a huge cruise ship docked on Detroit's riverfront this afternoon. It is a first for the city and for the well-known Viking Cruise Line. Our Megan Woods was there as it passed under the Ambassador Bridge. Boy, a lot of people were staring at this, Megan. That's right. And Karen, just like Andrew mentioned, it's been raining all day. It's hard to see, but people were out here with their kids, with their cameras, their phones, just to get a glimpse of that ship cruising down Detroit's riverfront. And if you missed it, we're going to take you right back to that very moment. It's called Viking Octanus, the biggest and most modern expedition ship in the Great Lakes. The ship docked in Detroit around 7 this morning as part of Viking's very first Great Lakes voyage. The cruise started in Toronto, and as passengers got off to explore the city, it was Metro Detroiters who pulled over to do some sightseeing for themselves. We thought we'd love to do a cruise, but can a cruise ship fit on the Great Lakes? I said, it's impossible. Where are they going to park it? And does it go under the Ambassador Bridge? So I said, we need to go see it. And again, that ship just took off at 2 o'clock. From here, they're heading to Alpena and then Mackinac Island. Um, and they end in Milwaukee. Now, coming up at 5, we hear more from locals who stop by. And we tell you how far they drove to make sure they saw this moment. Live in Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. All right, what a day. We appreciate it. Thank you, Megan.